This is the Odin GL Mini. We've done a review before on the Odin GL M, but it's a little bit different with the Mini version. The Odin GL Mini has 180 meter throw and a thousand lumens max on the light. And then it also has the green laser, which is what the GL stands for. The GLM is 215 meter throw and 1500 lumens. So it's a, the GLM is a stronger light and has more throw than the GL Mini does. And of course you've got the standard instructions. You can only mount it on the pick rail. The mount does not work. It's just straight to the M-lock rail like the GLM does. It comes with a, another notice here in the box that talks about the mount that says it has to be used on a pick rail rather than the M-lock to be able to actually adjust the, the laser when you mount it on the gun. So make sure that you use the, the mount that's a, that comes with the gun. So there's the little pieces that, protective pieces that come off there. You'll have one on the lens and then one inside the battery. And of course you just unscrew the tail cap and that take that protective piece off that would normally be stuck down in there like that. You just pull that out and you're good to go. So now the, the light will work and it's already been fully charged. So with this one, you've got two different settings on the light. You've got the low setting. Low is 200 lumens and high is the thousand and then it steps down as time goes by on that. Um, but you go from low up to high. So, and let's see, you've also got the switch here that will go in between flashlight, flashlight with laser, or just the laser as well. So right now it's set on flashlight. So you do medium press to get the low setting on. So that's 200 and then a full press gets the thousand on the flashlight. So, and then if you want to turn on the laser, just rotate this dial switch up here. And now you've got the laser with the light or rotate the switch one more time. And you've just got the green laser, just depending on how you want to use the light. So as compared to the, the GLM, pull the, the tail cap off there, you can see that the GL Mini is a shorter light, which would make sense since they call it the Mini. Um, about the same diameter as the the GLM, it's just about an inch, three, eh, three quarters of an inch to an inch shorter than the GLM. And it does mount differently. So you don't have the M-lock mount here like you do on the, um, the GLM. So let's take the rest of the stuff out of the box here. So pull this section up. Now you've got the switch that mounts to the, the pick rail and of course it's got the openings in the bottom of it so that it clips over the pick rail and then you've got the magnetic tail cap that will click on there and then you can lock that in place and then you can turn on the light. The large button turns it on high and the smaller button turns it on low. So you got a nice switch here that you can use with the light once you get it mounted on the gun. And then the last things that are in the box. You got the accordion style instructions and then you've got all the accessories here in this box. Now, of course you have the magnetic charging cord and it works like all the other Olight magnetic chargers. You just clips right on there, very 
solid attachment point for the charger. Then you got the actual mount itself. So the way it works is it clips over the pick rail and then has the the switch right or the the button right here that will lock the light on or allow you to be able to pull it off the mount. And the light will mount two different ways on this one. It'll either mount on the bottom so that it hangs down that way or it will mount on the side so that you can have the light mounted on the side of the, the gun or you can have it hang kind of down off the bottom if you want to have it coming off the mount like that. Now, there are a couple of Allen screws right here on this position so that you can tighten that down and actually lock the light in place. The upper side rail position does not have those same mounting screws because the, the two screws up here are what actually hold it onto the pick rail as opposed to actually locking the mount in place right here. So, but that just goes over the pick rail and you have a couple of Allen screws that you have to loosen up to be able to get that in place. So then you've got a, another bag here that's got one Allen wrench to loosen the screws up on top of the mount so that you can actually mount it to the gun. And then you've got the smaller Allen wrench that actually adjusts or tightens up these screws here at the bottom. And then you use this Allen wrench to adjust windage and elevation on the laser itself. When we get out to the range, we will use these two screw holes to be able to adjust the laser when we're sighting it in. And then there's also some extra screws in the bag with the, the Allen wrenches. Got a couple of different mounting screws for the, the actual mount itself, and then some more lock nut or some lock screws in there to replace ones that are in the mount uh, itself. So you got a, several different screws there that come in the bag. To mount it onto the gun itself, you just loosen up these screws here. So that just opens up the clamp for the, the pick rail mount. So it lets this piece move up and down here. And then you just clip that over the rail. Uh, I gotta open it up a little bit more. Okay, so it just clips right over the rail and then just tighten those screws back up there to lock it onto the piece of pick rail that you've got there. And just lock those down good and snug. Okay, now when you actually start to mount the light on the gun, again, it can come off the bottom like that, or it can come off the side like that, just depending on how you got it, your, the piece of pick rail set up. I mean, if you had it the piece of pick rail on the bottom, then you can mount it a couple of different ways that way. So just depending on how you've got your gun set up, it's where the light will actually uh, hit on the, the rail itself. But I'm going to mount it coming off the bottom right here so that I can take the smaller wrench and lock this thing in position so I know that it's not gonna move. Lock these 
two screws down here. So you've got the, the mount locked onto the gun and then now even if you press that button, it's not gonna let the, the gun, I mean the, the light come off the gun. And if you had it in this position, then you just turn that little button there to lock the light in place. But it's a lot more secure if you do it with those two Allen screws right there. So now to put the, the switch on, you just clip it right over the top of the, the pick rail on top there. And then you can just wrap that around the bottom of the gun to get it out of the way. And they provide a couple of um, little zip ties. If you want to zip tie the wire here for the switch to your rail so that it's not moving around. But if you kind of wrap it around the bottom of the rail, then it gets it out of the way enough so that it's, it's not really going to bother you uh, when you've got the gun up or anything. So, Okay, so we got it mounted on there. So now when you turn the light on, it has just a little bit of shadow of the, the muzzle device in there because this one is a kind of wide muzzle break here and gets into the light a little bit, but it's not bad. So it sticks down enough that it, it clears the, the muzzle brake pretty well. This is low, so that's low, that's 200 lumen, and then that's high, that's 1,000 lumen. So you get a little bit of shadow up in the, the upper right-hand corner there, but once you have the gun up on your shoulder, that's really not gonna come into play that much because the center light where it's shining is very bright and it's you don't pick up that shadow that's up there in the the upper right hand corner doesn't really distract once you get the gun up on your shoulder like you would normally be carrying it if you were trying to to clear a room or anything like that we're out here on the range and we're going to be getting the the green laser zeroed in for the gun and so we'll start by just seeing where the the laser is hitting right now and if i've got my reticle set up where it's right in the center of the target down there then the the laser is right at the nape of the neck on the right hand side or the the target's left hand side uh down there on the the range so we need to adjust to get this down and so we've got the two adjustment screws right here on the light and we use the the small Allen wrench that's provided to adjust it the way it needs to go. So let's. Okay, got that one set in place. Okay, this thing's a little finicky as far as being able to get it lined up exactly the way it's supposed to. In all honesty, there's no rhyme or reason to the way this thing adjusts. It's bouncing all over the place as I'm trying to adjust the, the screw. One direction, I turn the screw one way and I've made an S pattern just by adjusting the screw. Okay, so the way that I've got it set right there, the laser is just right above the chevron in my reticle. So let's see if it's gonna stay that way once I start shooting. And this is on a 300 blackout rifle.
Okay, with each shot, the dot bounces. It goes outside the, the chevron, back under the chevron, outside the chevron. It's not maintaining the zero at all. I've got the, the gun set up in my vise here. It's technically not a shooting vise, but it's the most stable platform that I've got because I want to give this thing every benefit of the doubt that it is working properly. Uh, I've, this is the second time I've been out on the range with it. When I was out with it yesterday, it didn't look like it was zeroing properly and was not keeping a zero. But uh, after a little more research today, I think I may have just uh, need to give it a little bit, give it one more shot and see how it's going to do at this point. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some rounds loaded up in the AR here. And we'll make sure that the rifle is still aimed where I want it. Yep. So we got the the green laser pointed at the center of the target down there. So let's see if it stays there. Considering the this thing is jumping around on me, but it's actually staying close to where the reticle is. But it's this vice is not doing me a bit of good. Okay, so where I've got the, the reticle adjusted, it's, it's actually staying pretty, pretty close to where it was originally. It's, it's moved a little bit, but where it's at, it's, uh, it's pretty close. We'll fire a few more shots here. I'm not going to say that this thing stays dead where you put it the first time, uh, but for what you're trying to do here on a 20, this is a 20, about a 25 yard zero here you're still going to be pretty close uh, to where it's is aimed and most of the time you're not going to be using the the laser for trying to get dead accurate shots you're just trying to get it into general place because if you're trying to do dead accurate then you're going to use your scope um, but the laser works well enough that it can get you close to where you're going uh, it may not be dead on where the uh, the reticle is set for the scope, but it's going to get you pretty close within whatever the kill zone is of what you're trying to shoot. Now, as you get further out, of course, that variance is going to be more of an issue, but you're not going to be using a laser much past 10 to 25 yards anyway because it's designed more as a close-up aiming point rather than uh, one that's going to be used 100 to 200 yards out. Uh, it's got a decent throw and you can see it a good ways out, but it's not something that's designed to be a aiming point that far out. So in the distance that you're going to be using it, the little bit of discrepancy that's in there is not going to make a huge amount of difference for what you're trying to do. Because if you're going to be using this for like a home defense weapon, Defensive accuracy, again, is not near as uh, 
critical getting that dead uh, right on uh, your your bullseye like it would be if you're trying to shoot a marksman type thing and you're not going to be using a laser when you're shooting marksmanship anyway so I wanted to give it a make sure I gave it a good fair shot and if you can get it zeroed and keep it stable and see what the the gun make sure the gun itself is is saying stable when you're zeroing the the laser then it's going to work for you um i still don't like the way the the laser zeros as far as the adjusting of the screws one of the issues with that is ah, just laid the rifle down in some pines out that's not good um but these screws are not exactly like this is on the midline of of this plane of the light but this screw here is not on the midline of this so when you adjust that screw it's always going to be going at a little bit of an angle so it it's, it can't get straight across at least to get to the middle of the light the way this screw over here can since it's in the the middle of the light so it's a little bit of a pain to adjust it but once you get it adjusted it stays pretty well on zero check out double eagle gunworks.com for more information like and subscribe at the bottom and we'll talk to you later thanks bye